Our damn impulses, they make us human, but they also make it hard to manage our weight as a human being. I've helped people for over 20 years with weight management and a huge part of the long-term weight journey is becoming a master over your impulses. After all, you either own them or they own you. So get ready for a crash course in taming that inner rebel with my 5P method to impulse control. Stay tuned. Did you know that our struggle with weight doesn't start with the food on your plate or get fixed in the gym? 80% of our weight struggle is mental. That's right. The key to unlocking long-term weight release and management begins in your mind. Hi there, I'm Rita Black. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, weight loss expert, best-selling author, and the creator of the Shift Weight Mastery Process. And not only have I helped thousands of people over the past 20 years achieve long-term weight mastery, I am also a former weight struggler, carb addict, and binge eater. And after two decades of failed diets and fad weight loss programs, I lost 40 pounds with the help of hypnosis. Not only did I release all that weight, I have kept it off for 25 years. Enter the Thin Thinking Podcast, where you too will learn how to remove the mental roadblocks that keep you struggling. I'll give you the thin thinking tools, skills, and insights to help you develop the mindset you need, not only to achieve your ideal weight, but to stay there long-term and live your best life. Sound good? Let's get started. And a warm warm welcome here in the middle of a warm, warm summer. Hello, everybody out there in the Thin Thinking community, just sending you lots of love here in the middle of the summer. There is something about July being the middle of the middle, if you know what I mean. Well, this is when I uh, usually see people getting what I call a summer weight release brain fog. Does this happen to you? You have really great intentions for the summer, but because we sort of relax our structure during the summer and everything's a little more loose and it feels a little harder to stay focused and there are a lot of distractions like holidays and weekends away and parties, ah, weight release becomes a little more, well, foggy. So I hope you don't mind that today's episode is a session that I made all about impulse control because the less focus we have, the more challenges we have with managing that more impulsive part of our brain. So let's dive in. I wanted to walk you through a training about impulse control. A lot of you guys have been asking me about how do I manage my impulse control when I'm trying to release weight. So I wanted to really quickly explain just sort of the why of why we are so impulsive a lot of times, even though we don't want to be, obviously. And then to go through the five P's of impulse control with you with the hopes that you can get some tools so that you can manage impulse control and release weight more easily and feel more in charge of your being, right? Okay, so why why do we have uh, why is there a challenge with impulse control? Well, one of the things is we live in a super stimulated world. Um, you know, since two thousand and seven, and I've been in practice since two thousand and two. Uh, but two thousand and seven was when those smartphones came along and started zinging our brains with a lot of uh, input. And I think the average American adult, or the average adult, regardless if they're American or not. Um, and child, uh, they have just so much more signals going through their brain. And a lot of people consider themselves having attention deficit disorder uh, when really there's just so much input and information going into our eyes and into our brain now on a daily basis. I think one of those things is like on a daily basis, we have a challenge with just too much input. So what that does is it starts to wear down our willpower because at the beginning of the day, we have a fair amount of willpower. That's why most people uh, can manage themselves, uh, breakfast, lunch, not too much of a trouble 
uh, with their meals or anything like that. But come uh, afternoon, evening, and after dinner, those are the times where our impulse control, the, the, our ability to exert will over our actions really diminishes and that's when we see ourselves reaching for that food shoving it in our mouth even before we even like are consciously aware that we're doing that right and so this is really challenging and it's super frustrating because here you are you're trucking along and you're doing great on your healthy eating and nourishing yourself and then all of a sudden you shove some highly um, crunchy salty refined thing in your mouth and then you eat it and you feel bad and then you're like oh well I might as well eat a few more and then the bag's gone and then you say oh well I blew it for today and it makes you feel like you're inconsistent on your weight release plan it's and it can be very self-sabotaging so one of the so I just want to kind of look at the brain really quick and just like see why why is this going on so you know if we had to look at the brain I know that's a little brain but you know, there's that 12% of our mind, I'm just going to get in frame here, 12% of the mind is that critical, analytical, willpower part of the mind, and that's the part of the mind that really wants to be, you know, uh, be good, right? Be consistent. Then this 88% is more our old habits and beliefs, but, and it's, and it's our old relationship to food. So also when we have relationship to particular foods, um, you know, our brain has gotten wired in with uh, comfort and love and emotions and friends and sociability. Uh, and then once it's wired in, this is a much more powerful part of the brain than that conscious willpower part of the brain, right? So as the day wears on, this part of the brain is diminished and, and especially if we are stressed, right? So if we're in a stressful situation or we come home and we're stressed or, or it's tax time or the kids are, you know, demanding a lot from us or um, the boss is, you know, or we're the boss and we've got a zillion things to do um, and we have stress or we have emotions, um, stress and emotions actually also, when we're in a highly stressed state, it in instigates our fight or flight instinct and it literally shuts down this rational part of the brain. So that, then we are left with that more base, um, uh, impulsive part of the brain, that part of the more um, habitual part of the brain, the, the old habits that we have that are just like, eat that, that will make me feel good. Eat that, that will be comforting, right? Okay, so stress or emotions can definitely diminish our impulse control. Also this idea of reward, right? So, um, the neurotransmitter dopamine is associated with reward. And when we are in the habit of eating something as a reward, our brain starts to develop a little muscle around that idea of that particular food and, and a dopamine muscle, meaning, meaning like it sees it and that dopamine brain starts to get agitated and say, ooh, ooh, I want that, I want that, give that to me, give that to me. Or the idea of like, let's say you've worked really hard all day and you feel like you deserve a reward, like to go out and have drinks and dinner. And again, that's the dopamine brain starts to buzz and say, oh, that equals reward. Because in your subconscious mind, the food isn't necessarily the reward, but it's everything that happens around the food or going out is the reward. But, but we see the reward as the food and the drink, but really it's it's the re true reward is you're going out and letting your hair down. But that the brain doesn't know that. It's just like, oh, give me that food that's going to be fun. Give me that food that's going to reward me, right? And, and that agitation supersedes our rational will, meaning like, you know, I, I, did, I said I wasn't going to go out tonight. I didn't want to drink. I didn't want to eat dessert. Any of that stuff, when, when that dopamine brain starts to get going, it becomes hard to resist that. So then we have these highly loaded food and drinks that are what some would call highly palatable, which just means when the brain sees them and associates them with them. And, th and this is where it comes more down to personal things. It's like what might trigger my brain to start buzzing and going, ooh, I want that, might not trigger your brain, right? So those things get wired in personally, like snowflakes, like we all have our own particular buzz foods that our brain just goes crazy for and it becomes very hard again to have practice restraint around them or drink, right? Food or drink. Um, 
And then the other last thing is, well, not the last thing. Then, then there's that also like, you know, have you ever had that experience of um, it's four o'clock and you're tired and you said you weren't going to snack or go to the snack room or eat chocolate today, but you're just tired. And then all of a sudden you're reaching for it. Well, again, that is um, because this part of the brain, you know, where it, it's tired now and it's, it's just it's taking a nap while this part of the brain is going and getting some chocolate out of that staff room because it thinks it's going to pep you up or take care of you, right? And then the last thing is the time of day because the time of day, whatever you've wired into the time of day as being your reward time, that also can be, <clears throat> or if we're just tired, if it's the end of the day. So tiredness, emotions, um, even being hungry, all of those things are going to wear on our ability to control our impulses. So let's look at some ways that we can manage our impulses and begin to have a more masterful relationship over our impulses, shall we? Let's do it. So the first thing we want to look at is, um, and, and this is probably one of the most powerful things we can do, is prevent the impulse from having to happen. That's why stimulus control is 60, 70, 80% of weight management. Yeah, that's right. It, it's so powerful just not having those foods in your environment. So if you come home and you're tired and there's some crackers you know that are in the cupboard or sitting out, or there's a plate of cookies sitting out, or even in the cupboard if they're your thing, your mind is going to start to hum and say, oh, go, go get those things. And, 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 and because there is no resistance left in your brain, it's going to be very hard for you to resist those things. So to prevent the impulse from happening, one, maybe if you're going to go grocery shopping, that's why they say when you go grocery shopping, please go when you fed yourself. And maybe when you're not even tired at the end of a workday, because your impulse control is going to be diminished. Um, don't have highly loaded food and drink in your environment if it's going to be challenging for you. Now, I know that's a conversation in and of itself because it, maybe there are other people in your environment that have brought that in, but that's, that's where support comes in and asking people to keep those things out of sight. Uh, my husband, my kids might bring in stuff to the house, but they know that I, I don't like to have it around. And so they'll keep their own cupboard or they'll, they'll, I don't have to look at those things. Um, so, so preventing that impulse from happening and being proactive in that, really thinking about your environments and keeping them clear of things that are going to be challenging for you in your day. Um, the other thing, the other prevention um, tool that you might use is the idea of fasting. So what I mean by that is when it is not an option in your brain, like I don't eat between lunch and dinner, it's not an option. And you start really practicing that as something that you're doing, um, but it's not something like you're trying not to eat. It's more you're practicing fasting. Um, that's an active thing and your brain can see that. And because food is not an option, the thought of the snack or the thought of the chocolate might pass through your mind, but you're like, oh, that's not an option because I'm fasting until dinner. That helps to move your mind along and focus on something different, dinner, or focus on something different, fasting. Oh, maybe I can get a cup of tea, but food for me is not an option. It keeps you from having to negotiate and especially negotiate when you're tired and that impulse control is diminished. Does this make sense? I hope it does. Well, let's move on. Well, Let's move on to the next P. Now, this is something that is a skill that as you, um, as you move forward in your weight mastery, I think this is going to be a, a real skill that will serve you very, very well. This is what I'm going to teach you. Uh, I, I mentioned it. Um, yeah, I've mentioned it in my book, and I've mentioned it in my shift weight mastery process. And it's this idea of practicing following through following through past an impulse. And I'm going to explain to you that really quickly. So I'm going to remove the smiley face. Come on, smiley face. Okay. 
So when we're dealing with a, a food that is making our brain go, ooh, I want that, and we're going to go grab that food, the brain at that time is just thinking pleasure. It's just thinking, oh, yes, pleasure, woo right? Now, the problem is that once we go and we eat that thing and, and our brain goes ding, 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 then that, that ding, ding, ding slowly kind of goes down to diminishes. The, the pleasure diminishes and we eat and we eat or we eat that thing and then we start to feel bad. And, and sometimes if we eat, eat, eaten like a big bag of things, we physically feel bad. So we experience pain. We either experience emotional pain because now we're regretful and we're mad at ourselves for eating that thing, or we're physically in pain and emotionally in pain and kicking ourselves and going, oh my gosh, I did it again and I'm a bad person and it's horrible and awful and blah, blah, blah. You know, now it's, you know, it's, it's not that initial fun time in our mind. So what you can start to do is practice ahead of time in your mind two alternative routes choosing the healthier alternative and what i mean by that is this before you are in those situations because because here's something else that's important to understand is that most of your impulse control is your challenges are probably the same challenges you always come up against meaning that my challenges are not your challenges and what my, my impulse control challenges are, are, are pretty consistently the same though, because I'm in the same environments, typically with the same foods and maybe the same people bringing in the same foods. So when you start to recognize, instead of saying, oh, I have an impulse control problem and start to say, oh, I have a problem with bagels coming into the office on Monday morning, every Monday morning. Then what can happen is because you'll impulsively grab one and eat it and then, and then you know, eat another one or it feel bad for the rest of the day. Uh, what you now have is a bagel on a new morning challenge. And now you can sculpt that down and start to practice how you're going to behave differently with that particular environment before you're in that environment. Just like an athlete doing crunches and running drills before they're in the, on the field and playing the game, you want to run these drills in your mind before you're in those situations. Now, you might be saying, but that seems like a lot of work having to practice. But, but think about it. If, if athletes do it, why wouldn't you want to do that as a weight master? Because I assure you, once you highlight and start to recognize like, oh, this time and that food are a challenge. This time and that food are a challenge. And you start to practice what I'm about to teach you. You're going to start managing those situations and not having impulse issues. So would not be worth some of your time and some of your mental energy? Because think of how much mental energy you spend beating yourself up about your weight and then the struggle, right? And just starting to learn to manage it instead. So here's, here's what you can do. So remember how I said, you see the food, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. So what you want to do prior to being in that situation is you want to think of the pleasure going for the food, and then you want to immediately follow it through, and, and you really want to feel these feelings. It's not just, um, here, I'm going to get in frame. Um, you really want to feel these feelings, and it's not, um, uh, uh, you know, intellectual it's like imagine yourself being in that situation and eating that bagel on monday morning and what that would feel like and then you want to feel that feeling of having eaten the whole thing an hour later and starting to feel like indigestion and bloat and really mad at yourself for having eaten that bagel so you want that emotional visceral feeling of pain so you can imagine the the, the pleasure into the pain and what you're doing is kind of closing up that loop because you're, you're training your brain in that moment because our brain cannot se separate fantasy from reality. You're training your brain to go from a, a pleasure point in the brain to a pain point in the brain. And, and the brain then starts to make that connection between the pleasure and the pain, pleasure to pain, pleasure to pain. Oh, bagel equals eh, pain. You know, little pleasure but then pain. Bagel equals pleasure and pain. 
a big like this is flatter than pain, right? You can you see how you're you're closing that up and you're going bagel pleasure pain, pleasure pain. <laughs> but it works because then you start to go, oh, that bagel takes my freedom and my power away from me. Yeah. You know what? So when you get into that situation, you're you might have that, ah, but then you remember the pain. And you're like, yeah, no, don't need that bagel, right? Now, so that's pleasure pain loop. Now, the, you can also shift. So this is the next step is shifting into the promise, which is the bigger pleasure vision. So, so once you go from pleasure to pain, the next step is going from the pain to, uh, or, or sorry, once you go from pleasure to pain, so that's one route. So you're, you're sort of making that a dead end. But then you want to offer the alternative route to yourself, which is if when I abstain from that bagel, I'm going to be one step closer to being my masterful weight release, beautiful vision of myself, but not just the vision of you being thin, because that, that, that works, but not in that moment when you're thinking that bagel and it's great, the, 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 the thin isn't as important as that bigger vision of you being powerful. Being powerful, masterful at your lightweight, that beautiful, long-term, permanent weight mastery vision. That's your highest self. It's your best self realized, right? So what you're offering yourself is instead of the bagel, you're offering yourself the bigger promise. Like, I don't want that bagel because I am moving in the direction of my powerful, light, ideal self that's able to express myself fully in the universe, bringing my gifts to the universe because I'm confident and I'm free and I'm fabulous, right? So you're not only closing that loop with that pleasure to pain, but you're going, and then what's going on really is I'm going from, from the bagel to my promised vision of highest self, ideal way, masterful, feeling good. So you want to practice that in your head as well. So, oh, I can see myself, that bagel, it looks good, but not, oh, I feel that pain and that bloat. And, but now what I'm choosing is my power. And, it, and just imagine yourself in, at that lightweight, feeling powerful, feeling confident, feeling strong, and allow that feeling to reverberate you know, within you when you're practicing. So that when you get to the bagel, you see the bagel not only as pain, but you see abstaining and, and moving forward and just walking past the bagel is like high power, enlightened, lighter, lean, slim earth itself. Okay? So practice that ahead of time. And, 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 or practice just walking right on by and feeling awesome. Or practice grabbing that thing and throwing it out. Or whatever, whatever that thing, your, your impulse now is to go pleasure to pain highest self walking past it or saying, no, thank you. I feel good in and of myself. Okay. Now the next key is when you're in the moment, like let's say you get to the bagel to, and you've practiced it, you take a pause to take a breath. And, and what you're doing is reaching for that higher level self. You know, we have our base instinct, which is our reptilian brain, which will go eat the bagel, right? But we're taking that pause. Now the bagel equals pain. And I'm reaching for my higher level self. Okay? So taking that breath, no matter if you've practiced or not, taking that breath and pausing and saying, do I really want that bagel? Because that bagel's, what's, how am I going to feel three hours from now? And when I feel better three four hours from now if I abstain from the bagel? Yeah, yeah, I would. Okay, let me do that. Okay, now the fourth key. Probe. Probe. What the heck does she mean, probe? So, what I mean by probe is ask yourself if it doesn't go well for you. Like if you went and ate the bagel, don't take it at that. Don't say, oh, I was bad. I have no impulse. I am just, I am just, oh, I'm just a creature of impulse, right? Don't allow that for yourself. Don't allow that old story to keep strangling you and pulling you down. Don't allow for that. Just be stubbornly 
probish. And what I mean by that is ask, like, wow, I reached for that bagel. Why did I do that? You know, what, what didn't happen prior to grabbing the bagel that didn't work for me? Did I, was there something I could do to prevent it? Was there some sort of practice I could engage in that would keep me, allow me to do that? So to so keep probing, you know, if things don't go well for you, don't allow yourself to go, oh, well, it's just because I don't have any impulse control and, you know, that's me. No, that's not you. You're becoming a master, a weight master, right? And weight masters don't just, um, you know, tell stories to themselves like, ah, oh, that's who I am. I just don't have impulse control. Uh-uh, that ain't you no more, okay? You are a weight master and you're inquisitive and you're, you know, quality of the questions we ask ourselves is the quality of our life, right? So ask yourself that deep question like, wow, I eat that bagel that really didn't work out for me. Why? How could I prevent that in the future? Right? So you can say, oh, well, if I ate that bagel, but that bagel caused me to ask the questions that allow me to not eat the next 180 bagels that cross my path. Well, then that bagel was worth eating if I asked the right questions, right? So probe, don't, don't allow yourself just to say, well, I have no income control or I blew it and oh, well, I'll just do better tomorrow. No, you, you need to ask yourself those questions and get really curious, get underneath them and you can solve these challenges. I swear to you, this is not rocket science. You can make this happen for yourself. It's really super exciting. Yeah. Okay. One last thing. I don't even remember what it is, but let's see. Okay. <gasps> Persist. Yeah. So keep going. Keep doing this. Keep practicing this. You know, this takes time and it does take some focus and it does take some willingness to work with yourself. But like the athlete, like, you know, if you were a kid athlete and you went out and kicked the ball or if you were a kid mathematician or if you were a kid something so you did something as a kid that you got down in and you just like really you know reading a book or whatever you just kept persisting and reading better books and different books and or kicking that ball and kicking that ball until you got it good you kept practicing driving that car until you were the driver you weren't just trying to drive so you can be the master of your own weight you can you can learn and cultivate skills that allow you to not only release the weight but achieve long-term permanent weight mastery. But it's taking the time to look beneath these things and to practice and to put these in place. It doesn't take a lot of energy, but it does take some focus to retrain your brain, to shift from fat to thin thinking, and you can do this. So try this out. Simple prevention, get that stuff out of your environment. Practice. Practice going from that idea of pleasure to pain. Oh, that is, looks fun in the moment, but it causes me pain. It causes me pain. And the alternative is me walking by, having my freedom and my power and feeling fantastic. And you really get that into your body, into your, your belief system. Pause. That bagel really going to serve me three hours from now? Mm, I don't think so. I'm just going to pass on that. Oh, I ate that bagel. Why did I eat that bagel? I, oh, yeah. My boss brings those in every morning. Maybe I can ask him not to put them on my desk and to move them down the hall. So I don't even have to see him when I come in. Eureka! Or, you know, some other thing. Persist. Keep persisting. If the bagel keeps coming into your environment, you will find out a way if you make it important to you. All right? So I believe in you. I hope this has been of service to you. Use the five Ps, prevent, practice, pause, probe, and prevent. Thank you for letting me of service to you. That's it, everyone. I hope you have an amazing week managing those impulses, being the master of them, enjoying a newfound power, and have an amazing, focused, impulse-free week. And remember that the key and probably the only key to unlocking the door, the weight struggle, is inside you. So keep listening 
and find it. Thanks for listening to the Thin Thinking Podcast. Did that episode go by way too fast for you? If so, and you want to dive deeper into the mindset of long-term weight release, head on over to www.shiftweightmastery.com. That's www.shiftweightmastery.com, where you'll find numerous tools and resources to help you unlock your mind for permanent weight release, tips, strategies, and more. And be sure to check the show notes to learn more about my book, From Fat to Thin Thinking, Unlock Your Mind for Permanent Weight Loss. And to learn how to subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss an episode.